Steve We don't ever want to come in who we'll like to run and get a word. Where my at? Where you at? Wave at me once you start joining in. Let me know. Say something. Pray for me. Got three. We don't want us more other people to join in with me. I have an exciting word. I'm going to take my time because I think it's something that we as people, believers of God, uh, miss out on a lot of time on other people. How you doing, Pastor? It's Xavier, Janetta. Miss Kiki, how you doing? For sure, I'm pretty sure he will, Xavier. He will. He's what? How you doing, Pastor? Miss Teresa, hello. Miss Keisha Elston on board. We'll get a few more minutes. Got twenty two people. Please share. I think uh, my uh, made public so you're able to share this. I know last time that I was on that uh, I had on, had it on private mode but that's what you get when you not really book but it's a learn. Please share. Share with your friends. All right, we have to 33. 30. Seven more three, we'll give him about two more minutes. Hey, Keisha. Junior, what's up, Junior? All right. Mm. All right. All right. All right. Mm. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Go open up with a prayer real quick. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, come say thank you. Oh, Father, mm. we thank you for this day. Father, as you just clear me, hide me, oh, Father God, that your words will be elevated through me, through this vessel, Father God, that you have put forth, oh, Father God. Father God, you just bless everyone who's online right now. Father God, you just cover them, oh God. Father God, I should just be with them, be with their family, oh Father God. Anything that's contrary to your will, Father God, for them, I ask you just cover them, oh Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And thank God. So tonight, uh, I'm going to talk about sowing the word. The word. But in in the in my study, it's talking about a seed, but I'm going to use the word. And we're going to go to the book of Mark chapter four 
and I know some of you that's on live using your phone, but I'm going to read uh, Mark, 4, Mark 4, and I'm going to begin with uh, verse 2. Mark 4, verse 2. And like I said, my topic is sowing the word. Verse 2, it said, he taught them many things by parables. And in his teaching, listen, a form, farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he scattered the seed, some fell along the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched. And they withered because they had no root. Other, other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. So they did not bear grain. Still, other seeds fell on good soil. It came up, grew and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. And then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them the secret of the kingdom of God has given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in the parable so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving and never hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. And then Jesus said to them, don't you understand the parable? How then will you understand any parable? For the former sows the word, some people are like seeds along the path where the word is sown. As soon as, as they hear it, Satan comes and take the word away and that was sown in them. Others are like seeds sown on rocky places. Hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time when trouble or persecution come because of the word. They quickly falls away. Still others like seeds sung among thorns hear the word. But the words of this life, the, the deceitful of the wealth and the desires of other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others like seeds sown on good soil hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Psalm 30, Psalm 60, Psalm 100 time was sown. And I want to go back. I want to talk about when uh, Jesus told them the secret of the kingdom has been given to you. So that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving and ever hearing but, but never understanding. So here we got to have an understanding of what the word is saying. And to get to understanding, we got to read. We got to meditate. We got to break that word down and get it to its lowest uh, common denominator and let that word take root in our heart. And I know that sometimes, you know, when when uh, we come in contact with people, we try to give them a word. We try to give them an understanding word. But if the word is just falling on their ears, it's just like the, the seed is never going to grow. It's just like... Um, it's never going to take root. So in order for the root to, to take hold of the heart, that's what, that's where it lays. And that's where the root should take place is in the heart. Cause anything that in the, that grows or make contact in the heart is going to last. It should, it should, should overcome anything that you come up against. So when it's just like I said, when some people sow seeds along the way, but there's all all the time you got an enemy on your trail waiting to take that word away from you. And what could be the enemy? The enemy can be somebody who don't even know you that saying stuff against you for no reason. You got people out here just just being mischievous for no reason. So therefore, we have to let the word of God take root in our heart. So we'll be prepared for anything to try to come against us. So um, it's just like once again. Satan comes steal and to destroy. And it says Satan comes to take away the word that was sown in them. So it's very important as saints of God that of God 
that we we sow the seed into people, even though it seems like that they're not uh, uh, accepting what you're saying or taking it in. But it's still our job as kingdom people to sow the word of God. We got to put it out there. If we don't put it out there, it's just like seed laying on top of the ground. As the words say, the sun is going to burn the seed and it's not going to take root and it's going to die. And that's the same thing that's happening to our people. We leave that seed right there on deaf ears. But if we don't spend time with people who we love, people who we care about, we're going to lose them. Look at the world today. Look at our people here in Talladega. We are losing them because we're not spending time. Like I say, if we stay, we keep the word shut up in us, it does our people no good. They're going to perish because we haven't done our job. We haven't sown into them. And God has, has set us, uh, set us aside to do that. We, he has sancti sanctified us to do that. We have, we have a job to do people. And I can recall, um, you know, some of us, um, we are deep rooted with our family, a family tradition, you know, about what they say, what they do, how they do it. We are rooted. And some things that our family and friends say, we take it to heart. We take it to heart. We live by it. We die by it. And people who you may look up to growing up or just being around, whether it was good or bad, you, you still have a memory, a memory, a remembrance of that per, of that person. I mean, you can recall everything they said, how they did it, when they did it. You can recall all of that. And that's the same thing God wants us to do with him. That's the same thing he wants us to do with his word. He wants us to recall everything that he has promised us because, uh, he, he had left us, left us with anything that we want and desire. But Jesus left us with his word saying that he would never leave us or never forsake us. And all we do, we should do in remembrance of him. So we should lack or want anything. We shouldn't be without anything. Like I say, our people lack because, you know, the lack of knowledge. But we, when, once we show ourselves approval unto God, he'll take care of the rest. He loves us that much. He'll take care of that. Even though, you know, we feel like we might fall slack or, you know, come short of his word sometimes. But guess what? He's a merciful God. He's merciful. He's just that good. And, and, and therefore, you know, we can't let, we can't let the matters of the world, uh, cause us to be slack on God's word. Because like I say, his word would always go forth. Always go forth. It says, in my study, he said, you have people who you may talk to on a daily basis in a conversation. And I know I have two good friends who, you know, who they always use their grand, their grandparents. Uh, as an example, if you got some out here that say my mama, my daddy, my granny, my granddaddy, it's something in a conversation that a person had left a mark in their life, in their heart. You can recall certain things of how they did it or how they said it. You can paint a picture for a person. Like I say, you, when we're trying to get a person to Christ, we ain't got to go pounding at them. We can just paint that picture and tell them about the goodness of Jesus. What he done for us, what he done for you. That's how we get people to overcome by our testimony. And that's a seed that we're planting in a person. It's, and they, and they, they'll leave from you thinking, hmm, if they did it for them, they can do it for me. They, they're going to leave with a thought, but we got to keep feeding them. It's just like a feel out here. Uh, when, when farmers are out here, uh, getting ready to turn their field, they, they put all kind of ingredients in the soil to make their crop grow. That's the same thing that we had to do with the people of the world. We got to sow into them. We got to feed them good things. We just can't pound them, pound the pound. You know, you know, I, I love the Lord, but like I say, if they don't know nothing about the Lord, you know, we're going to run them off. So we got to take, we got to go in at a, at a, at a low elevation to get to them, to reach their heart. And once we win them over on that side, I, I really do believe that they will come and see this God that we're talking about. This man who have done all these things, despite, you know, you got some people who know your past and, and even some who are here in the world, they know your past, but they, they, they're looking at you like, if he did it for them, I know he can do it for me. But we got to give them a chance. We just can't turn them away because we know what they did. 
We all once were lost in the world. Amen. Jesus went many different places talking about parable in his teaching. In my study, it said uh, he had 52 recorded parables. Jesus talked about a farmer sowing seeds. And I said the word. He talked about how some of the seeds were scattered and some fell along the path here and there. For the Bible says the birds came and ate some of the seeds. And I just want to take us back, you know, to the nature outside. You know, um, back here in my backyard, I had some work done. I had uh, some pine trees back there. Uh, some have uh, fallen over. I seen another this afternoon back there in the back where the storm blew over uh, last night. And, um, and I just want to take this nature walk. Let me paint this picture for you. It says like we have... We have many different trees in the wood and in the right season when the farmers are planting their crops and when they drop their seed, the bird comes and eat the seeds. And when the bird releases, it wastes. It don't care where it releases it. If you don't believe me, check your windshield tomorrow when you go out or the hood of your car. The, 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 the waste uh, that the bird released, the seed is in it. And if it fall on good ground, good soil, it's going to take root. Just think about it. If you're driving down the road, you got all these pine trees together. Let's think about how they got there. How did they get there? They, they were spread. It. They were spread. It. And I know a lot of us complain about the pollen, but that's part of the germination with the trees. The pollen helped germinate and help these trees reproduce wherever the seed falls. Because when the wind blows, it blows the seeds all across all across the land. That's the same thing God wants us to do with his word. He want, he want the word to go all the way across the nation, the United States. He want to go all the way across. So we can't be sad. But just think about, you know, like I said, the bird just fly freely. They fly, free, fly freely. So, and like I say, when they drop their waste, they drop it on good ground. And guess what? That seed that's in the waste is going to grow. It's going to reproduce. Just like pine trees, when they drop their pine cones on property, it's going to reproduce. You got baby pine trees, and that's how we have to treat the people that's in the world who don't understand the word. We got to treat them like a baby. We got to keep them watered with the word, gently, to bring them in. Because eventually, they're going to, it's going to take root. It's going to take root, and it's going to, it's going to, they're going to show themselves approval that it has taken root. They're going to have questions. And like I said, we got to be ready. We got to be prepared for this new thing that's coming because God about to make a big move here. He not, he not taking us through this uh, situation for nothing. We can't get a devil no credit of what's going on. And that's what ha ha has happened. We had given the devil too much credit of what's going on today. But it's, it's not about him. It's all about Jesus. It's all about him. So we can't we can't let him think that all this has happened that you know is his doing. God God calls things to happen. He calls things to shaking up around here. And we and folks, we got to be ready. If you're not ready, get ready. But the most important thing that I want to leave you with before I go, we need to be here and doer with Jesus' word. Let's get rooted. Let's get rooted, deep rooted in our heart, the word of God. If it's not rooted, the enemy can't come and easily take it away from us. It's just like taking candy from a baby. And what we're going to do? We're going to cry. We're going to complain. We all have choices. But we already have been given the direction, the techniques, what we need to do to handle any situation. We don't want to give the enemy any more credit for anything that's going on. For the law is giving, giving us an opportunity to get our heart in the right hearts in the right place. And to do that, we got to spend time with him. He's waiting on us. He haven't went anywhere. For therefore, as believers, we must have an understanding of the word in our heart. In our heart. This is where it starts in our heart. Not in our mind, in our heart. Our mind plays tricks on us every day. But that's why we have to ask the Lord to renew our mind daily. 
renew our mind daily. And eventually, it's going to get to the heart. And what's in the heart is going to come out. So therefore, we got to keep ourselves covered. It's just like a pine tree. The bark on the pine tree is very important to the pine tree. That's the same thing with God's word. God's word keeps us covered. Because if we let the enemy get here, if he get the head, he's going to try to get everything else. That's why it's important. Like I just said earlier, we got to ask the Lord to renew our mind daily. It's important. There's a lot of people who's lost in the word because the lack of knowledge. Not knowing how to renew their mind. But if we spend time with Jesus and do what he have asked us to do, we'll be all right. This world will be a better place. But sometimes our worst enemy is ourselves. But we got to get ourselves in order, in order, in order to help someone else. Because if people see us slacking, they're not going to pay us any, any attention. None at all. So that's why we have to be careful in all that we do. Instead of being a showcase, because people are watching. They are watching us. So therefore, continue to sow God's word. Continue to be fruitful with God's word. Let it fall on good ground. Because this is the right season. This is the planting season. But we need more laborers. We got plenty out here who need us. But we need more laborers out here in the field. And they, and like I say, they need us. They may not see it. That like I said, you know, as the words say, they see, but they're not receiving it. What's before their eyes. So before I leave, I want to leave, leave you with this word. Be ready. And quote unquote, I heard a young man say, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. We won't have, we won't have to make time to get ready if we stay ready. For God loves us all. And he has or have planted a word within us. Don't let the enemy steal our word from us, cause us to choke up. Cause that's the time when someone really need to hear a word from the Lord. Very important. That we keep a word in our heart. Daily. Daily. Renew our mind daily. Ask God to clean us up daily. Be doers. Amen. Amen. And I pray that I have said something to encourage someone along the way. I pray that God make you a willing vessel, be obedient to his word. I pray that God cover your family, keep them covered, wherever they may be. And I understand that, like I said, we have a lot going on. But prayer do change this thing, if you believe. We have to believe. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. I thank you for chiming in. Keisha Elston. For the spirit of the Lord said, hold on. Even though it seems like things are not going your way or the, or you think the way they're not going the way you should think they should be going. But he said, hold on. He said, in due season. In due season. 
your word is going to take hold and move forward. It's going to it's going to move forward where you're going to be the protector over your family. You're going to be the mouthpiece of your family. But the Lord said, do not entertain before you. Do not entertain what's going on around you in your home. For the Lord said he love you. He said, in spite of all, keep trusting him. When it seemed like that you're down in the valley, he said, keep looking up. He said, even though it seemed like that you were in a storm, he said, keep moving. The storm won't last always, thus says the Lord. The quarter, uh, quarter Wallace, for the Lord said that he's going to give you peace in this season. He said, even though that you've been going through a lot in this season mentally, but he's about to give you a restart mentally. He said, even everything that's happened in your life, he don't want you to give up on him. He said, everything that has happened will be restored and you will get an understanding if you trust him. But he said, the only way that he can get a clear level mind of you is that you got to give everything over to him. For the Lord said he hadn't forgotten about you, even though there have been times you want to give up, you want to give up on life, you want to give up on every situation, you want to give up on family. But God said he never given up on you. And he don't want you to give up on yourself. For he say he's lo he love you. For the Lord said he's going to give you peace. Sweet peace that you have been missing for a while. Amen. 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 Well, I, good peeps, my spirit is, is really rattling right now. Uh, I love everybody once again. And we will be back on live tomorrow with a different person. Please chime in. Until the next time, have a good night.